Hi, welcome to Beginning Engineers. Today I am going to be giving some tips for a good incoming quality engineer. This video was requested by Jose Luis Prado. If you have any good ideas for videos I should make, feel free to leave them in the comments. How can you be a good quality engineer? Well, in my personal experience, I think it comes down to a few different areas. And I was a quality engineer for about two years. Then I moved on to process engineering, and now I'm a business analyst. So it's not like I had a whole career in quality engineering, but I learned a lot in those two years. And there are things beyond this video as well, but I think these are really a good foundation for how to think about quality engineering as a career and how you can be good at it. Okay, so the general areas are positive attitude, analyzing everything pertinent, and going beyond the low-hanging fruit. So with positive attitude, it's good to blame the system, not the person, have a good personality, and focus on that defect-free future. When it comes to analyzing, use the tools of a quality engineer, look for patterns, and share your results. Let's dive into these a little bit more. Positive attitude. Quality engineering often deals with non-conformances and how best to quarantine defective goods and implement new solutions, which is change, to prevent those non-conformances from occurring again in the future or at least reduce how often they occur. So this means your interactions with the production team are often centered around mistakes. I mean, that's why you're there in the first place, because production allowed a non-conforming part to get through to the customer, and the customer noticed. But in today's world of high volume, high automation manufacturing, production workers simply can't do it all. Everybody's human. Mistakes will be made, and by improving the means of production, you can reduce errors. It's not always a person's fault. If someone's a good worker, even though technically they may have the responsibility for the mistake, if they're working hard, you need to improve the system to help them. So it's not how did your team cause this to happen? It's what kind of tools and changes would make this happen less often? How can we help you? By adopting this mindset and making it clear when you communicate with others that you think this way, they're gonna feel less attacked by you. And that probably sounds dramatic, but think about it from their point of view. Imagine the only time they see you is when you're coming out into production to talk about a mistake that went through their work stream again and again and again. If you don't make it clear you're trying to improve the system and you don't think they're the main reason bad things are happening, they are going to start to feel like you are blaming them. So make sure it's clear with your attitude and how you communicate that you're here to improve the system and you don't think they're responsible for all the problems. It's also about how you are just communicating in general, how you come off as a person. This is where I think humor or a good personality is key. Or if you have both, that's great too. So because the quality department's work often starts because of a problem and then involves analyzing that problem and discussing it with others, your entire job can just seem like a buzzkill. You can seem like someone who spreads misery. All you want to do is talk about problems and what is wrong. So you should work to humanize yourself more. And I know it's easy to just say, well, have a better attitude, be a funny person. And I'm not saying to be fake. Be genuine. But remember, even though it is a job, it's okay to talk about other things. You know, you can talk about yourself as a person. You can ask how their day is doing. If you like to make jokes, make a joke. If you're sarcastic and dry, be sarcastic and dry. But don't just make the entire interaction about what the problem is. If people see you as more likable or more relatable, and they even begin to like you over time, it's going to make your job easier and more efficient. And again, don't be fake positive. If you're not in the best mood, you don't have to force a smile. If you don't like making jokes, don't make jokes. There's something about you that is interesting. Or, better yet, be interested in them as a person. Obviously, don't rant for half an hour about something they want to talk about, but at least have some small talk before you jump right into the problem. And I think the final thing with a positive attitude, especially in quality, it's always good to have that end goal in mind, that higher aspiration. Dream of a defect-free future. 
There's an old saying in quality that goes something like, in quality, you are always aiming for perfection, but you know you will never get there. So I think if you really want to have a long-lasting and successful career in quality, you would do well to remember that the point of your job and department as a whole is to just nudge people closer to perfection, slowly but surely. And if you're really good, this dream of a defect-free future can be a way to inspire others. All my favorite managers in the past were really good at telling a quick story about how whatever we were working on would make things so much better in three or four months or six months. And this really helped motivate people. Next up, analyze everything. Use the tools of a quality engineer to measure your problems and processes. The check sheet, the control chart, flow charts, Pareto charts, histograms, fishbones, Ishikawa, scatter plot, 5Y, just in general, plan, do, check, act. There are so many good tools at your disposal for you to begin to understand how the world you're in functions. Using these tools, you can see if certain kinds of patterns emerge. Sometimes you can trace your issues back to something more systemic, newly purchased material causing issues, a new method of production causing issues. Maybe training was changed for new hires and that wasn't communicated and suddenly that's causing a quality defect. Maybe any of the changes I just mentioned were inspected at first and everything appeared the same, but due to your tools and analyzation, you notice that things are trending towards being non-conforming, and you can catch it early. And the best thing you can do with your findings? Share them freely and openly with the entire workplace. Of course, within the quality department, you can go into very specific details and high-level analytics, but when it comes to the work floor or any other department, have easy-to-understand visuals that people can understand just by looking at for a few seconds. Keep it simple, silly. And if you have visuals related to each specific production cell, it helps get buy-in from the production team. They can take some ownership in the data. And I'll end on this. Grab the low-hanging fruit, but dream of radical redesign. In quality engineering, the best fixes and improvements are the easiest ones that have noticeable effects immediately. But over time, the low-hanging fruit disappears and companies need more radical improvements to increase profits and stay competitive. Entire process or system redesigns are very intimidating and require deep knowledge of the process or system, but can be crucial for saving costs and retaining business. So don't be afraid to branch out into these more advanced and high-reaching ideas as you gain more experience. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope now if you're going into quality engineering or you were just curious about it, you understand how to communicate quality issues better and how you can be a better quality engineer or help make better quality engineers. Have a positive attitude, focus on the system, use quality engineering tools, and aim for perfection, accepting that you'll never completely get there. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe or suggest another video for me to do. Have a great day.